And so we're going to do a quick demo uh, of the Teams for Project Management application. First, I'm going to show you the ability to look at the Teams for Project Management app centrally uh, within Teams. Um, and here we are. I've got I'm in a browser right now, but this could just as easily be in your desktop Teams experience. It, I'm, I just do that because I have to have multiple personas when I'm logged in as my demo user. Um, of course, I have the ability to um, navigate here to my different teams and my different channels underneath those teams. I have a channel here for PMO, um, which is like my hierarchy, um, my high level information about all project work that's going on in the organization. You don't have to call it PMO. You can just call it, you know, projects or whatever you want to call it. But basically all of my projects across the company are here, um, regardless of if they're being managed in project online or project for the web. And I can basically group them in different ways. What I can also do is I can edit in line um, and I can change things um, at a glance within this central screen. So if I have information on projects that kind of span tools, I can centrally edit that. I have That's very a, cool. Yeah. Uh, because you could never do that before. Even even in um, Project Online, for those of you that are using Project Online or Project Server, you know that you cannot edit metadata centrally. You have to go into the respective projects and do that. There were these kind of third-party tools that, that were available for a while that let you do it. So there's probably maybe a customization that you're using. It was a very common ask. Um, this is, we, we can do it. We can get it done now with the Teams for Project Management app. So I know that there's a there's at least one customer that we have that uses it just for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so risk management. Um, here are all the risks that are logged across my pro project portfolio. And again, inline editing um, and the ability to say, okay, maybe the probability for that isn't as high as we thought, or the impact. I can go ahead and make that change, and then that's going to filter back to the project list itself. Um, in, in real time. Yeah, and that's huge. Um, we've had customers, this has been an ask for years for customers. They'll say, can I see all of my risk or all my issues in one one place? And we're like, yeah, we, we can give it to you in a Power BI or some kind of report, depending on your reporting tool. And then the ne very next question, every single time is, can <laughs> I edit it there? No, you cannot. No. But then you mean I've got to go open up that particular project and go to that list and go yeah. update it? Yes, that's what you have to do. Now we just this is a game changer. This allows it all to be edited right. in one place. Yep. Um, and then I've got the ability to log those from a chat. Don't forget, Mike. So that's kind of you know it's very participatory. That's how, in yeah. Where they're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. So so here we have uh, a new request form. Now this is a form. This is uh, not going to be like the coolest thing you've seen all day. But we can put your fields that you want to capture for your intake process into this form and then put it through a workflow and that would the, the result of that is that the data goes into the central app the right. also the result of that is that a channel was created and i'm not going to sit here and type and fill out a new request form and wait for a channel to get created so i did it earlier um it called awesome project creation a channel got created um, for my project based on the form that i submitted in the workflow and the approval and that channel is was automatically provisioned and it automatically had the tabs that I need on there. And it was able to determine if I, I should be using a project for the web project or a project online project and then provision that schedule um, right there so it's ready to go. And then I can build it out from there. Yeah, right from a template. So here's project for the web. Um, and just to give you a couple of just uh, demonstrate a very brief demonstration because this isn't really specifically a project for the web demonstration but some of you might never have seen it before what i can do is i can um, include um, a task above one an another one so i'm inserting tasks i'm creating tasks i'm just typing so I'm, i've got my you know my requirements document creation task and, and then I can go ahead and indent that and make that a subtask of something else. Um, and you can go many levels down into the subtasks, um, but I, I can give it a start date. I can say, I want this to start on the 25th. Um, and then that summary task is displaying that. So I'll give a bunch of these different 
you know, start dates. And I'll say, you know, I'll just kind of complete my little plan here. And, and so what it's doing is it's showing that those are already late. Um, and it's very easy to understand and kind of see what's going on there. If I want to mark something as complete, there's a couple of different ways to do that. First of all, I can just kind of check a box and it marks it as complete and notice that it did update the subtask of the summary task as well. Or I can just I can just type in here, make it 100. Um, and then, you know, I can also have different columns. I can have an assigned to column if I want to add, you know, assign it to a person and we can have that send them a notification in Teams. And then we can have dependencies. So these tasks are all kind of dependent on one another. If I want to make this task dependent on, you know, task two kickoff meeting, I can just start typing in it and it kind of fills it in for me. Notice it doesn't say predecessor. It says depends on because this is all supposed to be simpler terminology meant for the everyday um, person that's on your team, not necessarily having taken a course in project management. Um, I can also add different columns. So the only ones I haven't added are bucket, which is a categorization of a task, dependence after. Um, some of those, some of us refer to that as successors. Um, effort completed, effort remaining, and outline number. That's like a WBS number. Um, structure. Now, in order to look at this as a Kanban board, all I have to do is switch to board view. And it, it defaults to bucket but I can change that to progress. And that's really, that's actually a Kanban board. And I can take that and move things from in progress to completed just that easily. And if you were actually in this project schedule, looking at it from the other angle, you would see that happen. Real time. I have a, real time. So I have a timeline and this is like a Gantt chart. Um, I can zoom in and out of it. And, and I can create re relationships between tasks I can move tasks in and out and create those relationships by just dragging and dropping my mouse. Notice how that kicked it out. Now I have a predecessor, successor, or finish to start relationship on these two tasks. And as I as this task gets extended, my my path, my critical path, just just pushed out. And uh, and so that's important, people, because you know if you're using Planner or Excel or anything to do that. Um, the project was not going to push out for you. You're going to have to figure that out. So that's project for the web. Um, and then I also have my reports and things like that within um, within here. And it's going to show, you know, your Power BI and your Power BI report is going to be available right within the tab as well. So this is my awesome project creation status report. Um, which is periodically updated and it's got my tasks in there and it's got my my risks, my issues, my percent complete, lessons learned, how many tasks, how many hours, what's the cost, you know, and, and, my, and it actually displays my issues up here, my risk exposure. Um, and so what this is, is an automated status report. It's taking information from the metadata and also information from the project schedule and it's displaying them in a automated report. Um, this particular one, because it's my demo data, doesn't really look too pretty, um, but um, imagine if your projects were in here and you didn't have to create this report yourself. And then we talk about the risk log. Well, here we go. Um, so here's our list of risks on this project and here's our list of issues on this project. Um, and you can see that you know it's easy to log a risk view a risk, take a look at what somebody else had submitted, modify that um, if you have access to do so. And in the general channel, the post for um, for this, I can start a new conversation and I can say, um, you know, this looks like a risk. Um, and then I can say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and, and submit that. And, and I have this ellipse here. And I can go to more actions and I can say create risk. And that's going to bring up this little screen um, where I just have to complete a few other fields and then it's going to go right into that list of risks. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Making that proximity shorter. Yep. It's all about the proximity. Now, if I were to um, be on my project schedule and I wanted to start a conversation about a task 
with somebody, with one of my team members. This is why we want to do this in teams, guys, because, you know, that's not an email. That's a, that's a, this is going to be late, right? And then you can tag somebody in that and you can ask them what the status is. And that thread of discussion stays on, it stays there um, alongside the schedule. So it's contextual. If I have files, I can go in my file folder, my file menu, and, and I have a file that I'm creating. Um, I can go ahead and edit that. I can do it in Word or in the app. So I can edit right in, the, in Word or in Teams. So I can edit it here right in Teams. And I'm, I'm editing a project file, and then somebody else can come in and edit that file, and we're doing it together. Um, I didn't leave. I'm not emailing this around. I didn't leave to um, go to somewhere else to find it. I know exactly where it is because it's in the file folder for the project. And I can start a conversation about this with others. And I can say, hey, can you edit that part? Or did you take a look at this yet? And that's gonna show up in their activity feed up here in Teams. So, so no context switching. You didn't have, have to go to multiple, didn't have to go to multiple other applications, even within the Microsoft ecosystem. You just stayed within Teams to do all that. Right. So that's Work a little for the project. Preview. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little preview on Teams for project management. Team Teams for PM, we call it. Uh, it's our, our our app within Project, um, or that uses Project um, and uses Teams uh, together collaboratively to create these rich experiences and keep you in context. Um, and so, um, let us know if you are interested or you'd want, want to talk more about it. Um, you can email me at bryan.quick, Brian Quick, at innovative-e.com, or just visit our website and go to our Teams for PM area and then fill out a quick form for giving us your information, and we'll be happy to do a private demo for you or just uh, have a discussion. Um, so that is Teams for PM. So um, any other questions, let us know. Mm -hmm.